I'm gonna take you guys along with me throughout my days where you can see what I'm doing. You know, some things I can't put on camera. So as you can see by the title, I'm doing a video on things I wish I knew before I was a platoon leader. But these are just some things that I wish that I knew. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. Today was kind of a, not a long day, long morning, more so I'm recording on my phone, so excuse me, this really looks kind of bad, but came out to the field for a little bit, one day of training, we actually, <laughs> yell at me. Let's go! Let's get ready for this AMR tomorrow, we got going on. I don't care about no AMR! I don't care about that! So we're going to conduct some good old recovery. Lisa, guys, we're gonna get ready for this AMR we got going on tomorrow. So. Yes! Alright, guys, so today we're going on um, to Aerial Recon. We just finished plotting our grids. Can't show you guys where we're going, but this is what we're doing. Now, it should be fun. It'll be good to see everything from above, I think. Oh, yeah. 8 30. The helicopter passed, so we'll see you guys there. All right guys, so right now I'm in the middle of going over my property. So we just got back from the field and these are one of the things that I wish I knew. I know you guys wanna hear this a lot, going through your commission source. You hear a lot about property and they're gonna tell you that it's a big thing, which is true. But the thing about property is making sure you have systems in place, you're gonna be responsible for millions and millions of dollars worth of equipment. And right now I am. So pretty much the first thing I did when I got to my new platoon, I'm gonna share the supply and say, hey, give me a copy of my hand receipt. Your hand receipt is pretty much everything that you're gonna be signed for. So this is what it looks like. This stuff is worth millions of dollars. I'm just gonna hit on the important things that you should prepare yourself for. So first and foremost, you guys, you're not gonna know what some of this stuff mean, like encryption. I mean, now I know what it means, but this stuff, you're not gonna know what any of this shit means. So first and foremost, you want to familiarize yourself with the equipment everything you're gonna be signed for. I made a property book. This is what it looks like. I also made a property book for my soldiers with the same stuff as I do. I have, I have they book mirror mine. So you see, I counsel them as well. Pretty much a contract saying, you know, you're liable for this shit. And then they have the same hand receipt that I have. But what I did was I highlighted the things that only they are going to sign for. And so say for example, Lieutenant Aiken, you are signed for this box. Not only are you signed for this box, you're also signed for everything inside the box. Inside the box is a paper clip, red marker, blue marker, green marker. And you have this other paper called the bombs, the build material, right? Which lists that box and all the items inside the box and they all cost something. The army shit, military shit is expensive. And if anything's missing, somebody is gonna pay for it, right? And I'm gonna tell you right now, it ain't gonna be me. Now, this is a thing, because I've seen this a couple times and this is a little tricky. So you might get a part. So say for example, okay, let's go back to my box. This is perfect, perfect, perfect. Remember, everything is categorized by number. Say this, this room, this particular red marker right here, on the paper, it says that it should be 555, five, five, right? Now, say for example, you just open up a box and you got this marker. And it says 556. Five, you know what I'm getting at, right? Because this happens a lot and I've seen it so many times. Are they red markers? Yes, they both are red markers. Do they do the same thing? They definitely do the same thing, but they are different. If your paper says you should have the one that says 555 on it, it better say 555 on it. I don't know. I gotta stop cursing, I'm sorry. I don't care if it says 556 and it's a red marker in there and does the same thing as 555. 
it is not, you do not have it. It's missing. You don't have it, all right? My lighting, lighting here sucks. You do not have it, okay? So when you're doing your inventory, right? And you're switching out with somebody, another command, another, another platoon leader, and they be like, oh, I have the marker. But you read the marker, and it says 556, and you read the paper, and it says 555. Hey, listen, this ain't, this ain't personal. You gotta say this, it's ain't personal, it's just business. You a great guy, I believe it, but this is not personal, this is just business, because at the end of the day, you're gonna be liable for that stuff. So, that's one thing, be that detailed. And there are some things you're gonna just have to learn on your own, but this is what I'm here for. I'm here to share you guys my experiences. And that actually brings me to my next thing, you know, so now I'm gonna sit down and talk to you guys. I think I got your attention now. Networking. And what I mean by networking, it is talk to your support shops. Talk to, you know, go talk to S1. You don't know when you're gonna need something. Go talk to the S6 officer. You know, all, even the, not just the officers, the soldiers too. I'm telling y'all, like, we're humans. And humans, we like familiarity, right? We're more prone to help somebody that we're familiar with. Someone that, you know, we see multiple times a day or multiple times a week. Am I saying just go there, waste the time to waste time, but sometimes you gotta peek your head and talk to people, all right? And what I mean, what else I mean by networking is also asking questions. Do not go to your unit and think you know it all, think you have to know it all. Expectation management. Do not expect yourself to know everything, okay? Cause you're not. Do not go in there, don't go to your unit and you know everything because that's going to be the quickest way to piss your NCO counterparts off. And I've seen that plenty of times. Me, I did not have that issue. I didn't have that issue because I'm prior enlisted. You know, I was NCO myself before I switched over to the dark side. I know what piss off NCOs. Coming in here straight, fresh out of Bullock, whatever, still got milk on their tongue trying to come in here and run shit. That's the quickest way to make enemies with your NCO counterpart. You have to look at your NCO, your platoon sergeant. He's going to mentor you. I know you're thinking like, oh, but they, you know, I'll rank them. This platoon sergeant usually have 15 years on you. About 85% of the most of your life, because a lot of lieutenants, they come in, they're like 22, 23 years old, and they've been on 15 years. They need my platoon sergeant. Now, he's been in the Army for 19 years. Brain, I am that annoying lieutenant. I, and he'll tell you straight up. I annoy the fuck out of him because I ask him questions. This man has 19 years. Your platoon sergeants usually have 19 years of knowledge that you need. I just need to suck out and suck out everything. Just wanna take out everything from his head and put it into mine. And that's what I mean by networking. I'm not saying listen to everybody. And this is why you should talk to multiple people because I have a saying that I go by. Listen to one person, you become a clone. Listen to two people, you become confused. But you miss, listen to multiple people, multiple, you know, then you could process and figure out what works best for you, what makes more sense to you by talking to multiple people. Multiple ranks, you know, Warrant officers, especially they are warrant officers are your SMEs. They are your subject matter experts, right? I talk to them. You know, I talk to other officers. I talk to NCOs. I talk to people from different backgrounds as me, whether they support or combat arms. And that's what I mean by networking. All right? Do not come in here. Do not go to a unit. Act like you know everything. They don't care if you're a ranger. They don't care if, they don't even care if you're prior enlisted like me. <laughs> With that being said, goes this this brings me to my next thing. Damn, I'm just like, so you want to be expected to know a lot of things, right? And sometimes it's unfair, you know. But this is why they pay us. They pay the officers more than everybody else because we're ex more than expected out of us. We have to be self-driven, you know. We have to go out and do the work. What I did is I went, so I'm dealing with radar. So part of field artillery. Is radars as well. Radars is an asset, right? So what I did is I went and you know I looked up 
and found the, the publication for radars. This is my Bible. I read that shit. You see this? This is like just one chapter. This is chapter six of the pub, of the dot 12, right? I fucking read, I read this shit. I do my homework, you guys, all right? This is just one chapter. Listen, you required to figure it out. I'm gonna tell you right now, anybody gonna, nobody gonna come in here and hold your hand. You know, figure it out what your, what your soldiers do. I got all these chapters printed out, all of them printed out. That this is why, and this is why you need to talk you need to utilize your platoon sergeant, people around you. Be honest about it, like, hey, I don't know, I don't know this shit. Y'all gotta teach me, you know? And I came in very humble with both my platoons that I had. I, the one that I have even now, like, I'll make it real, I'll be real honest, because they know, they know it's true. They know you don't know nothing. Well, well, low, what we got here? Fucking first half over here. Hey, not doing shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, you guys, we about to go get our little, Call it jungle, jungle uniforms. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna go get them. <laughs> Who's that first arm? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna fight. <laughs> Hold on, wait. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> I got a trick for your ass, first arm. <laughs> Are you too top? Since we have the coronavirus and stuff going on, guys, we have to. <laughs> Wait, is it noon already? My shift's over. <laughs> Yo, he be talking so much shit. You see, saw a drummer. Cut that shit. Yeah. I... <laughs> All the stuff I'm saying to you is from my experience, right? This is my second platoon I'm at right now. I'm a radar platoon leader. I'm a tapple. It calls tapple. You know, you're gonna hear a lot called trust but verify. Trust the person that's telling you, yeah, this is that and that is getting done. We also have to verify that it is getting done, you know? And thankfully, I'm a platoon leader again, and I'm, and I'm able to implement things differently. When I first came to this platoon right now, I brought all my, my entire platoon together. I told them, hey, we going to PMCSC motherfucking vehicles. You know, make sure you're running everything, going by the fucking line, by the TM. Hey, I want this running. I have to go for a meeting because it's another thing, as a, platoon, as a platoon leader, you're not always gonna be able to be around your soldiers, right? I told them just like this. I said, hey, I don't knew, I don't mean no disrespect, but once you get this equipment running, I need you to take a video of it and send it to me. Put that at me like I was crazy at first, and I said, you know, I'm gonna tell you straight up, straight up. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust you, but I don't trust anybody. And we need to build that relationship. Like I actually have a great relationship with all my soldiers. So when your vehicles are breaking down, your soldiers aren't gonna get shit for it. You are, you are the platoon leader. You need to lead your platoon. And it's just, it's just the honest truth, you know? People gonna bullshit you. They'll come in with that little butter bar and, oh, you know, it's gonna blow you off. And they're gonna think they could do the bare minimum because that's either what they're used to or, you know, they just wanna pull the wool over your eyes, thinking that you don't know any better. So that's the first thing I wish y'all do before I do the tomb layer. Get turn out the 5988s right here. They put old bolts on them, then turn them into the XO. And then you as a platoon leader need to make sure that shit is actually getting fixed. Speaking of 5988s, that brings me to the next thing. How to utilize GCSS Army. XOs are gonna spend a lot of their time. This when you're a lieutenant, you're either gonna be a platoon leader or an XO. You're gonna be on GCSS Army a whole lot. And this is the shit they don't teach you in Bowler, guys. I'm telling y'all, they, they ain't gonna teach you guys this shit in Bowler in school, and it's okay. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. GCSS Army is very intimidating. Look at this shit. You see this? Look at this. It's fucking. I gotta stop cursing. It's like so much stuff here. Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, what's up, what? Hey, there goes. There's a man of the day right there. So, we doing his promotion ceremony Ooh. today. I mean. Who's gonna pin you? I don't know. Who you got? Who do you want to pin you? Mass. Okay, then get Mass to pin you then. Uh, and I, I got so my damn camera just freaking died. So listen, I'm not here to show you guys how to utilize these programs, these platforms, whatever. Yeah, I'm just here to show you guys what they look like and show you, explain to you what I wish I known. You know. So, and a way to learn GCSS Army, we can see a unit, and you know, and if you know you're gonna be the XO, so what you need to do, because what I did when I was at XO. I went straight to my, my motor pool officer. There's a warrant that's up there. MCO, I believe, that's his title. And 
Uh, he gave me a class on GCS's army. You guys, I have to go. I'm gonna show you guys this promotion ceremony. And my soldier. What's up guys, it's Friday, the guys are gone, they're released for the day, and you're gonna see very fast as a platoon leader, you get a lot more work done when guys are home. So right now, we have this kind of that me and the other platoon leader had worked on for our training that's coming, for our training that's coming up. This is the last thing I wanna talk about too. You're gonna to wanna to be proficient on PowerPoint. I swear to you guys, you guys are gonna turn into PowerPoint ranges because the amount of products you have to make on a daily basis is just out of control. This shit, this is how tedious it got. This one little icon, look. I had to make a square, another square, a little circle right there. Look at that, like, these little lines. You know, the aesthetics of your kind of, the aesthetics of things matter. Even something like this, like a brief, you know, timeline. So whenever you do any kind of training, the um, platoon, you guys are gonna need strip maps. Strip maps being directions to that training site. What you want to do is you want to get familiar with an app called Get This App. You know, this is what's going to help you, you know, make your strip maps. I'm not going to show you the one that I work that I have right here, but you guys want to have to make strip maps, and you might want to be proficient with Google using Google Maps, Google Earth, and um, pretty much being really good with Paint because you're going to have to make like, you know. You have to make instructions on how to get there with checkpoints and everything very, very detailed. So that's all I have for you guys. I hope everything that I talked about helped you all out. If there's some more information you want to know, I can do a part two. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Leave a like. I'm about to get back to this work. And I'll see you guys later.